you wake up alone in the depths of Castle Ravenloft. The last thing you remember was when the man with the piercing eyes and long cape approached you on the dark street outside the inn. It had to be Count Strad, the vampire. Outside the castle, you know the sun is high in the sky. Now you have to find your way out of here before the sun sets and Strad returns to finish whatever foul plot he began last night. Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored Never Boring. Castle Ravenloft from the Dungeons & Dragons adventure game series is one of my favourite dungeon crawlers. And I know that a few of my subscribers had expressed interest in seeing the game played on the channel, so I thought, what the heck, let's give it a go. So today I'm going to be running Adventure 1, Escape from the Tomb, which is a solo adventure. Castle Ravenloft is actually a cooperative game that plays up to five players, but this adventure is specifically designed for one player controlling one hero. As you heard at the start of the video, Strad has captured our elf, and we need to make sure we get out of the dungeon before the sun sets and he comes to drink our blood. I'm not going to front load this video with a rules explanation, this game is getting on a little bit now, and I should imagine a lot of people know how it plays. For those people who don't, I will explain the rules as we go. But I will very quickly show you the build that I have come up with for our Eladrin wizard, Imaril, so you can see what tactics we are going to have available to us. This is Imaril's character card. You can see that we have an armor class of 14. We have only six hit points, but we have a speed of six. Our surge value is three. If at any point we are knocked unconscious, we can be revived with three hit points to carry on the fight. And we can do that up to twice before it is game over. We have a special lore ability, which isn't applicable when you're playing with just one hero because it benefits your allies. And then we have a list of powers. You can see we can take a phase step and then we can select one utility power, two at will powers and one daily power. The at will powers can be used every turn. The utility powers and the daily powers can be used only once per game, unless you find a way to revive them to get a second use out of them. As the aim of this adventure is to run like fun and try to get away from all the monsters and there's a very good chance we're going to be outnumbered, the first at will power card I chose was Thunder Wave, which allows me to attack each monster on my tile. For my second at will power I chose Scorching Burst, which allows me to choose a tile one tile away from me and I can attack each monster on that tile. For my one use daily power I chose Lightning Bolt, attack one, two or three monsters, each monster can be within one tile of you. As you can see, I've gone for lots of crowd control here. For my utility power, I have chosen shield. Use this power when a monster hits you. The monster's attack misses instead and you gain plus two bonus to your armor class until the end of your next hero phase. That is going to be very important because I can see myself taking a lot of hits from monsters. And finally, we have our Eladrin specific utility power phase step. Use this power during your hero phase. Place your hero on a tile within one tile of you. I imagine that will come in handy. The last thing I have to do to finish building my character is draw one treasure card, and the treasure card has to be an item, so we have... That's a fortune, lucky find, so we discard that one, we draw again. And we have got the item Holy Avenger. Play this item immediately. You gain a plus one bonus to attack rolls against adjacent monsters while this item is in play. Increase the bonus to plus three against undead monsters. That is a brilliant card. That is an amazing draw. That's going to be very helpful indeed. So there we go, that's our character. We have woken up in Strad's Crypt. The sun is setting, we have to book it. If the sun sets before we've escaped the dungeon, then Strad will rise from his crypt and start chasing us and then things will get very ugly indeed. I have a stack of dungeon tiles just off camera. The exit tile to the dungeon is the 11th tile in that stack. So the aim here is just to explore as much as possible. And at this point, we can just get going. First of all, there is a hero phase. During your hero phase, you can move and attack, attack and move, or move twice. But as it's the first turn of the game and we don't really have anywhere much to go, all we can really do is move to a tile edge so that we can explore to see what's going to happen next in the dungeon. Let's head south. And that completes our hero phase. What an exciting start to the game. We next get an exploration phase where if your hero occupies a square at the edge of a tile that is unexplored, you will draw the top dungeon tile. This is what we need to be doing as often as possible. And I have drawn the crypt of Barov and Ravanovia. And what we do with this tile is we place it so that the arrow here is facing towards the tile we have just left. And now because we have revealed a new part of the dungeon, we have to draw the top card from the monster deck. And we have drawn a kobold skirmisher, obviously sitting there guarding the prisoner. 
and you can see all of the relevant information is on this card. We've got the armor class of 13, the number of hit points, which is one. There is an attack listed at the bottom of the card. The plus nine is the modifier to the attack roll when the monster attacks us. And the damage of one is how many hit points we will take if they successfully hit us. The experience points at the bottom list how many experience points we will get if we kill this kobold. And then there is a tactic section. The tactics are for when the monster activates, you step through this like a little computer program and it tells you exactly how to move and attack with the monsters. It's pretty neat and self-explanatory. We will go through that in a moment. And here is our little kobold. He gets to stand on the bone pile in the newly explored tile. That completes the exploration phase, so we move on to the villain phase. First of all, we have to check if we played a tile with a black triangle or if we didn't place a tile at all. In either of those cases, we have to draw an encounter. They almost always sap your health points and they become like the ticking clock of the game really because you are constantly fighting this battle of attrition as your hit points are constantly worn away and it forces you to move as rapidly as possible. And our event is a treasure chest. We have found a dusty treasure chest. And despite the fact there is a kobold breathing down our necks, we are going to take a moment to open the chest and see what happens. So we're going to roll a d20 and refer to this little reference chart here. Hopefully we will get a new treasure card. We have rolled an eight. On a one to 10, we take two damage. So not a great start to our adventure. So we're gonna mark that damage on our character card with a couple of these hit point tokens. Next, if there was a villain on the board, we would activate the villain and Strad is a villain. So when he turns up, that will be applicable. But for now, we skip straight to the next step of the villain phase, which is where I will activate any monsters under my control. And that means this kobold will attack us as well. There is no end to our woes. Referring back to the kobold card, we can see that under the tactics, it says, if the kobold is within one tile of the hero, it attacks the closest hero with a thrown javelin. So the kobold skirmisher will not move. He will stay exactly where he is and he will attack us. He will roll a d20. He will add nine to the result. If he can match or beat our armor class of 14, we will take a wound. And he has rolled a three. So a three with his nine gives us a 12. And that means that we managed to dodge the attack. That's fantastic news because the wizard really can't take many hits. And that finishes our first turn. Normally now play would pass to the player on my left. There are no other players, so it goes back to my hero phase. So we're going to start our turn by moving. We want to move towards a tile edge so that we can explore another tile. We also want to take a pop at this kobold and I have the Holy Avenger item, which gives me a bonus if I am adjacent to the target. So it makes sense for me to move into a position where I'm adjacent to the kobold and also a tile edge. So we are going to go here. I'm then going to use my at will power thunder wave, which allows me to attack each monster on my tile with a plus seven modifier to the dice roll. And of course I get that additional plus one from my Holy Avenger. So this is a dice roll with a plus eight, needing a 13 or more to kill the kobold. And I rolled a five. Five plus eight is 13. So by the narrowest of narrow margins, I have slain the kobold. We remove the kobold from play. We add this card to a communal experience points pile. And best of all, we get to draw a treasure card. And we have drawn fortune, lucky find. Play this fortune immediately, draw three treasure cards and keep one, discard the others. That's amazing. Our three cards are harrowed experience. Play this fortune immediately. This card counts as one experience point. Put it in your experience pile. We have the Fortune Action Surge. Play this Fortune immediately. You can move your speed or make an attack. That's really not helpful at the moment. Or we have the item Holy Water. Choose an undead monster within one tile of you. It takes one immediate damage. That's really useful, but it is played instead of making an attack. And most of my attacks are area of effect attacks that will target multiple enemies. So I think I'm just gonna take the experience point. So Harrowed Experience will go into my experience point pile. That finishes my hero activation, so we go to the exploration phase. I am at a tile edge, so I have to draw a new tile. And despite shuffling these tiles really, really well, all of the crypt tiles are turning up together. So this is the lonely crypt. And unfortunately, it has another black arrow, which means we will be facing another event as well as a monster. And the monster we have drawn is a skeleton. It's an undead monster with one wound. That holy water would have been very useful after all. So here's our skeleton, he goes on the bone pile. 
And then we go on to the villain phase, which means we have to draw another encounter card. We have found Leaf Lip Siege. A gnarled old man dressed as a clerk steps from the shadows. I watch the master's treasure. At least I do unless I'm distracted. So of course we're going to try to distract him. We roll a dice on a one to 10, Leaf will summon another monster. On an 11 to 20, we get to draw a treasure card. And that is an 18. We have found an item, the Wand of Teleportation. Use this item during your hero phase instead of attacking. Choose a tile within one tile of you. Place each monster on the chosen tile on a tile within three tiles of you. That's really, really useful. We can just dump all the monsters out of our way. Well, while things may appear to be going splendidly, the skeleton is now going to activate. And if the skeleton is within one tile of a hero, it moves adjacent to the closest hero and attacks that hero with a charging slice. Charging slice gets plus nine to the attack roll and deals two damage. So first we have to move the skeleton adjacent to us and because this is a solo or cooperative game, there are situations where you get to make choices as to where you place monsters or what monsters will do. In this case, I can pick any space that is adjacent to me. So of course I'm going to place the skeleton in a way that is beneficial to me and what I intend to do on my next turn. So I'm putting him there. Unfortunately, we have to deal with this attack first. He's rolling a d20, he is adding nine. And if he gets 14 or more total, we take two damage. And that is a 12 with the nine, that's a big hit. We take another two damage. We are already on the ropes. Fortunately, that is the end of the enemy turn, so it is now our hero phase. Naturally, we're going to start by attacking the skeleton. We are going to use Thunder Wave, which is a plus seven modifier to the dice roll, but we will be using our Holy Avenger, which gives us an additional plus three against this undead enemy. So we are rolling a dice, adding 10 to the total, and we need a 16. And that is an 18. With our modifiers, that is more than enough to inflict one wound on the skeleton. The skeleton only has one wound, so he is destroyed. Good news all round, not only is the skeleton gone, but he has gifted us two experience points. And of course we draw a treasure card too. And we have drawn another fortune card, Glimpses of the Future. Play this fortune immediately, look at the top three cards of the encounter deck and put them back on the top of the deck in any order. That is brilliant. So the cards we have at the top of the deck are Passage of Time, each hero takes one damage, ouch. Teleport Glyph, place the active hero and each monster on his or her tile on the tile farthest from the active hero. That's not going to cause us too many problems. Or Music of the Damned, which is a permanent event. Whenever a hero would place a new monster, the hero draws two monster cards and chooses the monster worth the most experience. In other words, we're always going to be facing the toughest monsters. Well, that can go at the bottom. So that's our three cards, and this is the order they're going to go in the deck. Music of the Damned at the bottom, then Passage of Time, Teleporter Glyph at the top. And before we finish our turn, we have to remember, of course, we want to move. So we're going to move to a tile edge. We're going to retrace our steps a little bit. Up to there. We now have our exploration phase. We have to draw a new tile. And we're in luck, we have no event on this particular tile because it has a white arrow. However, in this particular adventure, every time you draw a white arrow tile, you advance the sun tracker. So we are one step closer towards Strahd waking up. And by the way, you may be wondering why I've decided to backtrack through Strahd's crypt when he's going to wake up at some point and start chasing me. And the reason I'm doing it is because we know there is a teleporter glyph event coming up in the deck. If I was to continue along this path here, going this way, when that teleporter event occurs, it would have teleported me directly back to Strad's crypt. By doing this, I'm going to start off in a different direction, and then when I do get hit by the teleporter, I'm going to be teleported past Strad's crypt in the other direction. Hopefully, that makes some kind of sense. It makes sense in my brain anyway. Of course, even though we don't have an event to deal with this turn, we still get a monster. And I hope you don't suffer from arachnophobia, because it's time for the spiders. Here's our cute and furry little friend. He's going to appear on that bone pile. And now we go straight into the villain phase, where this spider will activate. And if we look at the spider's tactics, we can see that if the spider is within one tile of a hero, it will attack the closest hero with an acidic web. That's a plus 11 on the dice roll, and a hit will cause one damage and slow me. So we roll our dice and really we are hoping for a one or a two. <laughs> and unbelievably, that's a two. 
so the spider has rolled a total of 13 and completely missed. That's unbelievable. We start our new hero phase and I'm quite impressed how well this is going at the moment. Things are probably about to go pear shaped, but I'm going to start by moving towards a tile edge, which will also bring me adjacent to that spider so that I can make use of my Holy Avenger and my Thunder Wave to try to splat him. So I move to there and then I attack with my Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave is plus seven. I get an additional plus one from my Holy Avenger and I will need to roll a seven or more to hit the spider. And that's a 19, that's a big hit. That is almost a critical hit. So we inflict one damage and the spider only has one hit point. So we do squash the bug. We add the two experience points to our experience point pile. And that's kind of a big deal because that means we have five experience points in the pile. Those experience points can be used in two different ways. First of all, if we draw an encounter and we do not want to face that encounter, we can spend five experience points to cancel it. Secondly, if at any point we are attacking and we roll a natural 20 on our dice roll, then we can spend five experience points to level up to level two, which will make us stronger. Also, we mustn't forget our treasure card. We have found some thieves tools. You gain a plus four bonus to rolls to disable traps while this item is in play. Nice. We've moved, we've attacked, it's the end of our turn we need to explore. And we have found Strad's workshop. And uh, I like the use of the word workshop there. That really doesn't look like any workshop table I've ever seen. The good news, it's another white arrow, which means no event. The bad news, of course, the sun will advance. Strad is one step closer to waking up. Even more bad news, we get another monster to deal with. And it's a zombie. Here he is. That finishes the exploration phase, so we move on to the villain phase. There is no encounter, but our zombie will activate. We look at the tactics and we can see that the zombie will move adjacent to the closest hero and attack that hero with a rotting fist. So we will advance the zombie up to there because that is a beneficial placement for me and the use of my thunder wave next turn. And then he attacks, he's getting plus five on his dice roll. Let's hope I roll nice and low. That's a five, five plus five is 10. That is below my armor class. So I have survived the attack. It's my go again. I'm going to start by attacking with Thunder Wave, which allows me to attack monsters on my tile, which is why I placed the zombie where I did. And of course he is adjacent to me, which means I get an additional plus three modifier for my Holy Avenger. That item is amazing. So glad that I pulled that as my starting item. So I'm getting plus 10 on this dice roll. I've rolled a four, despite that being incredibly low, the armor class of a zombie is only an 11. In effect, I couldn't really fail that attack, but I wanted to roll anyway, because if I had rolled a 20, I could have leveled up. Our zombie is removed from play. We get another experience point and another treasure. And we have found a crystal ball. We can play this instead of attacking to reveal the top card of any card deck or the top tile of any tile stack. With that all done, it's time to move. Let's head south again. Going into our exploration phase, we must draw another dungeon tile. We have drawn the chapel. It's another white arrow, which means we will not get an encounter card. But once again, the sun has to advance. And that means one more white arrow and Strad will wake up. And there's a monster. There's always a monster. It's another zombie. We now go into the villain phase, which means our zombie will advance and try to hit us with his rotting fists. He's rolling a dice, adding plus five to the total. And he has rolled a seven. Seven plus five is 12. Not enough to get through my armor class of 14. These dice rolls are really going my way at the moment. We're set in a bit of a pattern here now, but it's working. So I'm going to use Thunder Wave on the zombie with my Holy Avenger. So I can't really fail this roll. It's just whether I get a chance to level up. Not this time, but our zombie is dead again. Redead. That's one more experience point for the pot. And another treasure card pull. It's the fortune card breath of life. Your hero regains one hit point. That's fantastic. I had four wounds. I am down to three. And we're going to head south again to get as far away from Strad's coffin as possible. And it's time to draw another tile. And it's a crossroads with a black arrow, which means we will be getting an encounter card, which means Strad doesn't wake up yet. I'm actually quite pleased to see a black triangle for the first time. But before we figure out what horrible encounter has befallen us, we have to draw our monster card. It's another Kobold Skirmisher. 
we are definitely being lucky with our monster pulls at the moment. Before our monster activates, we draw our encounter card, and we've drawn the teleport glyph. It's going to cost me five experience points to cancel that event, and I think I would rather save those experience points for when something really bad happens. Let's teleport. Well, that's that. Maybe I've made a bad choice. If Stroud wakes up, I almost certainly have. But let's press on. The Kobold is going to activate. He no longer has a target, so he is just going to move one tile towards the closest hero. He will move to the bone tile in the chapel. I'm not too bothered about him. It's my hero phase. I'm going to go south so I don't need to move. And there's no enemies to attack, so I don't need to attack. So instead, I am going to use my crystal ball item. This item allows me to reveal the top card of any card deck or the top card of any tile stack. And I think I'll take a look at the next treasure card because whatever the next monster is, I've got to face it anyway. Whatever the next tile is, I've got to face that. At least I might be able to plan ahead by seeing what treasure I'm going to get. And the next treasure card is a short rest, which will allow me to flip up one of my used powers. That's really good to know because it means that I can use any of my daily or utility powers this turn, knowing that the next time I kill a monster, I will be able to regain it. It's time to explore. Please don't be a white triangle. It's not. It's a black triangle in a big open chamber. That's fantastic news. Strad stays asleep for another turn. We also know what the next encounter is. But first, we have a monster to face. And it's a wraith one of the nastiest monsters in the game. Here's our Wraith, wave to the kids at home. He looks friendly, he's not. That completes our exploration phase, so we go into the villain phase and we do have to draw an encounter card because of that black triangle. And as we know, it is the passage of time, each hero takes one damage. I'm just gonna soak that damage, I could use five experience points to cancel it, but I think I'm going to need those experience points later on. Now things are gonna get spooky because I only have two hit points left and if this Wraith successfully hits me, it will inflict three damage. And if we look at the Wraith's tactics, if it is within one tile of a hero, it will move adjacent to the closest hero and then attack with its life draining claw. So we will move him up into our tile and then he attacks, he's getting plus six on this dice roll. And he has rolled a two, that is a miss, however, the Wraith has a special ability, even if he misses, he still inflicts one damage. But I'm not dead. That finishes the Wraith's activation, but I got so excited about that, I forgot that I was supposed to move the Kobold first. On your turn, you will activate any monsters that are under your control. In other words, any monsters that you revealed through exploration, and you activate them in the order you found them. So I should have activated the Kobold first, then the Wraith. It doesn't really matter in this situation. The Kobold is just going to advance into the next tile up. Time to move on. I am very badly wounded. Now we have a real situation here. The Wraith has two wounds and the Thunder Wave spell that I've been using throughout the playthrough so far only inflicts one wound, so it wouldn't kill the Wraith. However, it would blast him into the crypt adjacent to us, which would get him out of my way for a little bit. I do have a daily power called Lightning Bolt, which does inflict two points of damage if it successfully strikes, but if you kill a Wraith, every hero on the Wraith's tile takes one damage. The Wraith is currently on my tile, if I kill him now, I will also take a wound and that will render me unconscious and I don't want to be unconscious just yet. So I think, although I'm not going to be able to kill the Wraith with it, I'm still going to use Thunder Wave. So Thunder Wave is plus seven. I get an additional plus three from Holy Avenger. A five or more will do. And that's a 16, so that is a successful hit. The Wraith takes a single wound and then he is pushed into an adjacent tile and we will mark his wound with a token. And now I need to run away. We've completed our activation, so we go to the exploration phase, we draw another tile. And we have discovered the crypt of Sergei von Zalovich. We have also discovered a monster. Thankfully, it's another one of our playful zombies. We now have three monsters on the board, but before any of them activate, we have to draw our encounter card. And as we know, it is the music of the damned. This will stay in play and whenever we have to draw a monster, we will draw two and we will take the one worth the most experience points. Things are about to get tougher. And I have placed that card 
on top of the monster deck because I know that doing a playthrough like this while I'm trying to think about what I'm doing, narrating everything that I'm doing, making sure everything is in shot and makes sense, I am absolutely going to forget to draw two monster cards next turn. Hopefully, by placing Music of the Damned on top of the deck, it will remind me when the time arises. We still don't have a villain to activate, so we go straight to our monster activations. First, our kobold will advance. You can't see him, but he is currently in the workshop at the top corner of the board. He is going to advance towards Strahd's Crypt. Next, our wraith will activate. He is not within one tile of a hero, so he will move one tile towards the closest hero, which means he floats back to the bone pile in the lonely crypt. And finally, our zombie will attack. He will move adjacent and strike with a fist. The zombie rolls. He gets an eight. He adds five to that for a total of 13, one below my armor class rating. If he had been just one point higher, he would have knocked me out. We squeak through on the skin of our teeth. And that ends the monster activations, so it's time for our wizard to activate, and he is going to strike with a lightning bolt. Lightning Bolt is a daily power, which means normally you would only be able to use it once, but we know the next treasure in the treasure deck will allow me to flip this card back up, so I may as well use it now while I have two viable targets, because with Lightning Bolt you select one, two, or three monsters. Each monster can be within one tile of you, and you attack them all with a plus seven attack, doing two damage if you hit and one damage if you miss and that means I am guaranteed to kill both of the enemies. Furthermore, the Wraith is not on my tile, which means his Death Shriek ability will not inflict one point of damage on me, and as I've already said, I will get my Lightning Bolt back as well. So really, this is an ultimate win-win-win-win-win situation. So my first Lightning Bolt will strike the zombie. It's a 17, it's a big hit. He's gone. The second Lightning Bolt will strike the Wraith. That's a six, and Lightning Bolt only has a plus seven modifier to the attack roll. A Wraith has an armor class of 15, so that is actually a miss. But as I have already stated, when you miss with the Lightning Bolt, you still inflict one damage. That is still enough to kill our Wraith. The Wraith lets out a horrible death shriek, but I don't care. I'm one tile away. It's fine. That's two monsters killed in a single turn, netting me four more experience points, which is pretty amazing. However, even though I have killed two monsters, I still only get one treasure card. And of course, the treasure card is the Fortune Short Rest, which lets me flip one of my used powers. I will, of course, flip up the Lightning Bolt I just used. That was amazing. I'm going to move now. In our exploration phase, we draw a new tile. It is a crypt with a white triangle, which means Strad wakes up. Somewhere in the darkness behind you, you hear the sound of stone scraping on stone. It must be the sound of Strahd's coffin lid sliding open. The Vampire Lord has awakened. Here he is. Strahd is placed on the bone tile and he will activate in every single villain phase. And it is worth noting that that's not such a major thing when you're playing solo, but if you were playing in a game with other players, Strahd would get to activate not just on your turn, but every other player's turn as well the villains really go ham. And just because Strahd's woken up doesn't mean we get led off lightly with monsters. We still have to draw a monster card. And we have Music of the Damned in play, which means we have to draw two monster cards and pick the worst. The cards we have drawn are a skeleton and a wolf. The wolf is worth one experience points, the skeleton is worth two, so the skeleton comes into play. So first of all, Strahd activates. Strahd has a huge villain card, we look at the tactics section, we go all the way to the bottom, and we find out he is going to move two tiles towards me. It's okay, I'm not worried, it's fine. Next, our kobold will activate, and he will scurry across to Strahd's crypt. And then our skeleton will activate. Let's stick to what has worked well for us, we're going to move him up adjacent to us, so that we can thunder wave him next turn. So this skeleton is making a charging slice action, which is a plus nine modifier to the dice roll and will inflict two damage. That would be enough to kill me. And he has rolled a 16. Now I do have a one use spell called shield, which would block that damage and keep me alive. But it's a bit of a waste because 
Effectively, I'm only blocking one hit point with it, whereas that shield could be used to block an attack that would do two or three hit points worth of damage. And I still have two healing surges. At the start of the game, you get two healing surges. Every time you're knocked out, you spend one of those healing surges. The game is only over if you are knocked out and you have no healing surges left. So right now, I'm going to take this point of damage from the skeleton. Down I go. It's the end of the villain phase, so it is now the hero phase. The skeleton currently looks very pleased with himself, but I start the turn by spending a healing surge, represented by this massive token here. And that brings me back to life with three hit points. So I am not fully fighting fit, but that's more hit points than I've had for a long time. And I can immediately continue my turn, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to thunder wave this skeleton right in the face. He is adjacent to me, he is undead which means I get to add plus three to my Thunder Wave attack, which is already plus seven. So I'm rolling a dice and adding plus 10, looking to get 16 or more. And that is a six, that is exactly enough. But again, only because I have that Holy Avenger item. That item is amazing and it has really helped in this playthrough. So of course our skeleton is removed from play. We add another two experience points to the pile. We are really racking up experience points now and we get a treasure. Clear air, play this fortune immediately, discard an environment card in play. We actually have Music of the Damned in play at the moment, so this card cancels that event. That's incredible. Bye bye, Music of the Damned. And I glance across the crypt at the slowly advancing or not so slowly advancing Strad, and I think it's time to book it. So I am going to scurry off and explore the next tile. And I have found the King's Crypt. It's a black arrow, which means we will get an encounter. I think whatever it is, I'm just going to spend experience points to cancel it because I have so many experience points at this time. We draw our monster card and it's another Wii Kobold. Now we already have a Kobold in play and it is not possible for any one player to have more than one of the same enemy in play. If there are multiple players in the game, then it's possible for different players to have the same enemy, but you can't have one player controlling multiple versions of the same enemy type. So we have to discard this kobold and draw again. And we have drawn a wolf. This is our first wolf of the game. Who's the bestest boy? That completes our exploration phase, so we move to the villain phase. First of all, we draw an encounter card because we drew a black triangle. And the event is Spirit of Doom. Each hero can immediately move up to his or her speed. After this move, each hero on a tile with no monsters takes one damage. I guess there's not really a lot of point in spending experience points to discard that, so I'm just going to move and just make sure that I don't end up adjacent to that wolf. Think I got off lightly there. Of course, it's the villain phase. Strad is our villain, so he is going to activate. He moves two tiles towards me. It's okay, I'm still not scared. Next, our kobold advances. Poor little guy, he's had nothing to do. And now our wolf will move adjacent and attack with a pounce. The wolf attacks with a plus seven. He's rolled a 15 with his plus seven. That is a hit, but he only does one point of damage. I'm fine with that. Unfortunately, it does mean I have been slowed. And when you are slowed, it means you can only move two spaces on your next turn. It's the start of my hero phase and I've messed this up a little bit because I've moved the wolf off of my tile, which means I can't thunder wave him. I could use Lightning Bolt, which will guarantee to kill him, but do I want to save that for whatever I'm about to uncover in the next tile? I am incredibly close to the exit. In fact, I have revealed 10 tiles, so I know for a fact the next tile is going to be the exit. I just have to survive long enough to use it. Oh, to heck with it. Let's Lightning Bolt the Wolf. It's massive overkill, but I just need to survive and stay as far away from Strahd as possible. I've got no chance of killing him. So we roll for my attack. I've rolled an eight. Eight plus seven is 15, that is enough to kill the wolf. I get yet another experience point. I flip my lightning bolt card face down and I draw a treasure card. Level up, play this fortune immediately. You can spend five experience points to have your hero become level two. I am so doing that. I take five experience points worth of monsters from my experience pile. And then I flip my character board. This was my level one side. I flip to my level two side. When you level up, you increase your hit points by two. 
your armor class by one and your surge value by one and you can choose an additional wizard daily power. I will take Fireball. Choose a tile one tile away from you, attack each monster on that tile and it does three damage on a successful hit. That's massive. I suppose I should remove the miniature from the board too. I still have a movement but I am slowed which means I can only move two spaces and to be honest I'm already at a tile edge, I'm just going to stay where I am. So that finishes my hero activation and that slowed condition is removed. It's time to explore and indeed we have found the secret stairway, we have found our way out of Strahd's dungeon. Will we live long enough to use the stairs? You can see it's a white triangle which means we won't get an encounter but we will get a monster. And our monster is a ghoul. There he is, having some dinner. Clearly the ghoul has been using the secret tunnel to get up into the graveyard to feast on some corpses. But never mind that, it's the villain phase. Strad is still out of reach of any of his attacks. He advances again. Now I'm a little bit frightened. Next our poor wee kobold advances. And then our ghoul attacks. And if we look at his tactics, we can see that if he is within one tile of a hero, he will move adjacent to the closest hero and attack with a paralyzing claw. He is getting plus seven on this dice roll, but my armor class has gone up to 15. He has rolled a 15 with his seven. That is easily enough to hit me. He causes one wound and I am immobilized. If you are immobilized, you cannot move in your next hero activation, but I need to get onto that secret stairway. I could use my shield ability, which will block that damage and prevent me from being immobilized. I was really kind of hoping to save that, but I am going to use shield now. It's my turn and it's time to Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave targets every monster on your tile. I'm going to start by targeting the ghoul. Thunder Wave has a plus seven modifier. I'm using Holy Avenger on an adjacent undead creature, which means I get plus 10 on this dice roll. A six will kill him. And that is a six, exactly enough again. So the ghoul is destroyed. We remove him from the board. I get two more experience points and another treasure. It's another short rest. I get to flip up one of my used powers. I am definitely going to flip up my shield. But of course, Thunder Wave didn't just target the ghoul. It also targeted Strad, so I get to roll again. Strat has an armor class of 19. Furthermore, he is not adjacent to me. So I'm just getting a plus seven on this dice roll. I need to roll high. And that is a 19. That's incredible. I've actually inflicted a point of damage on Strad. Furthermore, I blast him into the adjacent room. You can go over there, Strad. You've messed with the wrong wizard. But of course, as I say you've messed with the wrong wizard, I run away because I'm that sort of a wizard. I am cheesing it. I am on the exit tile. I have to survive until the beginning of my next turn. Shouldn't be a problem. It is the exploration phase and I did not reveal a new tile. And that means even though I am on the exit tile, I have to draw an encounter. It's a new environment, Haunted Mists. The undead monsters gain a plus two bonus to their attack rolls. I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna discard it anyway. I've got more than enough experience points. I will use five just to make sure. That isn't going to be an issue. Next up, Strad advances again. He is two tiles away now, so he is just going to do his evil villain strut. He advances like that frost creature from the Moomins. Man, that episode used to give me the heebie-jeebies when I was a kid. Oh, and guess what? Our little kobold advances too. But that's it. That's the end of the turn. We start our turn on the exit space. We scurry up into the darkness and we escape. Strad stands there and watches us go and I can't help but feel like he let us get out. He's up to something. But that's it. That's a win for the good guys. Against all odds, I'm incredibly surprised I didn't get absolutely destroyed in the first couple of rooms. The wizard is so fragile, but I was very lucky getting that Holy Avenger item at the start of the game and Thunder Wave really worked well in this particular scenario because it meant I could keep pushing monsters away from me. It certainly helped me to survive that encounter with the Wraith, which would have gone very, very badly if I'd have had different items and different spells at my disposal. There was a slightly tense moment at the end there where I was going to be immobilized by the ghoul, but also we got a lot of low level monsters. We had a lot of zombies and kobolds, which are relatively easy to deal with. And fortunately, Strad only woke up at the point when 
he was a little bit too far away to be a massive threat. Even so, his constant advancement two tiles per turn really is quite scary. He is a proper villain and we have not seen the last of him. And hopefully you haven't seen the last of me because I hope you've really enjoyed this video. I'm sure there's probably a few mistakes in there. When you do playthroughs like this, things will get overlooked, things will get misplayed out of sequence or forgotten entirely. That's just the nature of doing these, but hopefully this was enjoyable nonetheless. And if you like the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really like the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.